What is up everyone, it's Herper15. Um, today I'm going to make a hopefully quick video, probably it's going to end up being uh, two parts, um, about my garden, and it's going to be a quick garden tour, of, uh, specifically the tropical garden. Um, there will be lots of Latin being thrown around, so <laughs> uh, enjoy. This is a, a can of Cleopatra. Um, um, it's a cool plant. Uh, it's got two sets of chromosomes, which is what makes this crazy coloration. Um, I, if I were to guess what cultivar the red one is, I'd probably say it's uh, Canna Australia. And then uh, the green is probably the native to Florida, um, Canna uh, Flaxida. And then they somehow bred that together. And uh, that is what Canna Flaxida flowers look like. And, um, Australia canna flowers are red. Likely, the red one you see right there is, uh, is gonna open up red. So this is a very interesting plant. Um, I'm growing it in a pot because, uh, it, uh, it likes water. And, uh, this pot has no drainage holes and I don't have space in my pond. So, <laughs> um, yeah, this is a neat plant. Uh pot is probably 14 inches in uh, in diameter and uh, again it has no drainage because this canna loves water uh, and the, the spike here is not fully open uh, real quick this is a uh, uh, colocasia mojito uh, elephants here and these are petunias and the tags are right here um, PPAF means plant patent applied for, so this plant, if you were to uh, propagate it um, without the grower's the uh, consent, you'd get into some trouble, and that's what the petunias are, so I'm crazy to this. What a weird cultivar name. <laughs> uh, this is a Junkus uh, corkscrew rush with um, blue lobelias around it. Nothing too crazy there. Um... There's a black magic elephant here that needs to be dug up in autumn um, because it is not hardy for our zone. I am a zone 6A, uh, kind of more more of a 5B. So that is the first group of plants I'll show you. So here you can see a Musa Basju. This is the Japanese fiber banana. And uh, this is a, a plant that I just planted this year. As you can see, because the um, top of the leaf right there is already four feet tall, and it has pups. So um, yeah, this is definitely a cool plant. Um, and they are hardy. I'll show you one later in the video that uh, made it through the winter. All I did is dump a bag of mulch over it and uh, covered it with lots of snow. So yeah. That is the uh, hardy fiber banana. Uh, right below it is a uh, type of hardy elephant ear. Um, this is from Brian's Botanicals, same with the uh, Canna Cleopatra. Uh, I highly suggest you guys uh, ordering plants from Brian's Botanicals. Um, the only problem they have is uh, they don't answer the phone really. They're not too good about that, so shoot them an email if, uh, if you've got any questions. Um, but their product is fantastic, so uh, it's well worth the uh, the minor issue. So they call this elephant ear sangria, because likely because of its blood red stems. And um, I believe in Latin, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, um, that sangria is a Latin word for blood. Um, over here I've got some anthuriums. And... Uh, Anthuriums are actually a tropical plant, unless you guys are, unless you lucky people who live in the tropics or subtropics are like, Anthuriums aren't tropical. <laughs> For us in uh, the northeastern part of America, they are in fact very tropical looking. Um, these are also called flamingo flowers. So moving on this way, probably I'm going to put a third anthurium right there, have a little mass planting effect. Um, moving on this way is a hosta. I don't know what the type of cultivar is, um, with uh, a German 
or bearded iris or iris germanica. Um, the cultivar name here is uh, Orinoco Flow. Uh, cultivar, for those who are wondering, is uh, short for cultivated variety, which means basically um, they it was either bred or there was a cool plant found in nature and they uh, propagate it and make it uh, available to, for people to buy. Um, likely with variegated plants, they were bred rather than found in nature. Um, so these are the hostas. And you can hear the water now because we are near my water feature. Koi! There are actually only two koi in that little school of, of carp, goldfish and koi. Um, this is an iris versicolor, uh, northern blue flag. Uh, this is another native plant. Um, it's uh, called iris versicolor because you can see some of the plants have lavender flowers and uh, others have purple flowers, which is pretty cool. Um, at least if you're into horticulture. <laughs> um, this is a uh, hibiscus machutos. Um, uh, this is a, another native plant. Believe it or not, hibiscus are native. You might not know it by hardy hibiscus. You may know it by rose mallow. And uh, they like to live in marshes. So do you know what you get with uh, mallows that live in marshes? Marshmallows! Ha ha! Ba -dum -bum. Sorry. I had to. <laughs> um, that's a black-eyed Susan, not a weed. Um, here's another uh, marshmallow. I mean, uh, rose mallow. Uh, except this one, instead of having all white flowers like this plant here, which will come out uh, about 8 inches across in late summer, um, this one has uh, white flowers with a pink center which is closest to what the wild species is. Um, kinda cool. Moving down the stream, we have a nice specimen of salvia. Uh, Maine night is the cult of our name. And uh, yeah, this is a neat plant. Um, I'm gonna be doing a major rebuild on the pond in um, whenever I can, uh, whenever work slows down a little bit. Um, so the pond will probably go to the, you know, not in the garden, but, you know, following the lawn and, uh, go to that German bearded iris and then out to like there. So it'll be a pretty, the pond will be pretty big after, uh, after it's redone. Um, this is an, uh, ostrich fern, which is another native plant, but, um, ostrich ferns, uh, I like one because they're native so um, native plants are nice because they're very tough and uh, even if you have an extremely harsh winter um, your garden is likely going to be intact uh, because native plants have evolved in a certain region um, on a mildly ADD note uh, hibiscus of all types including Rose of Sharon uh, leaf out and sprout very late so your hibiscus is not dead whenever uh, if everything else is coming up except the hibiscus it comes up um, in probably mid-may and that's just shooting up not you know like most plants have leafed out and everything but yeah uh, keep that in mind if you ever buy one and I highly recommend it um, that's a hosta I don't know what type of hosta but it is a hosta <laughs> Um, this is a Solomon seal, a variegated form. Um, these are pretty cool plants. They, uh, it's another native woodland flower, um, except the variegated is not uh, what you would find in the woods in northeastern North America. Um, here you can see a uh, viola. This is a uh, surprising, doing like surprisingly well. Like it's June. And it's still flowering and, you know, be doing what it's supposed to. Usually they kind of crap out when it gets hot. Even though it hasn't really been too hot yet. So, uh, when I do a video in late summer when the hibiscus is flowering and the bananas are huge, um, uh, take note if it's gone out of this area. I probably pulled it out because this is a true annual. So it completes its life cycle in one season. 
Don't be confused by tropical plants that are killed by frost, like impatiens, petunias. Uh, all those plants are really uh, tropical perennials um, that get killed by frost. They're not true annuals. Um, so yeah, that's a viola. This is a, an agapanthus. This is a hardy agapanthus. Um, the cultivar name is uh, Monmid. Um, or no, it's uh, Midnight Blue. This is a hybrid agapanthus, also known as Lily of the Nile. So pretty cool plant. Um, this is a water arum, also known as Peltandra virginica. Um, this is definitely more of a foliage plant, um, but it has really showy flowers. Just kidding. Um, that is the flower. I'm not sure if it's open or not, but uh, I don't know. Kind of funny looking. This is uh, the water lily here is um, Nymphaea odorata. The cultivar is Alaska. Um, here we can see some dwarf Egyptian papyrus. Um, surprisingly slow growing. Maybe it's like the rest of the hardy tropicals um, or tropical plants that uh, kind of need the heat to grow fast. Um, but the heat has not set in yet, so the, uh, the plants have not really uh, taken off yet. But uh, this only gets about 30 inches tall. Uh, right here we have, um, I have a couple, uh, Ruelia, or um, Katie is the cultivar name, Bluebells. I don't know, any of those may ring a bell to you. Across the pond is, uh, pun intended. Just kidding, we're not in Great Britain. Um, um, <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I have ADD and I'm laughing at my own joke. How sad is that? This is an alligator flag, um, which is uh, Thalia dilbata, the hardy water canna is another uh, common name for it. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to insult any of my British. Uh, followers um yeah so um here we have uh francis williams hosta this is um i bought that from lowe's and it's actually doing this is its first spring coming up so uh it's actually doing pretty well and yes airsoft guns do shoot through leaves of hostas for those who are wondering what that hole is um <laughs> Over here is uh, an Enset banana. This is uh, Enset ventricosum uh, morelli. Uh, morelli is the cultivar name. These are pretty cool. They have a very vibrant underside of the leaf. That's a calla, um, which seems to have finished flowering. But um, I always leave my callas um, up. I don't dig them up as soon as they're done flowering because... Uh, to get a lot of good flowers, and this is true with all bulbous plants, um, to get good flowers you have to have uh, the foliage up so that it can feed the bulbs and make the nice flowers. Um, this is an elderberry. Uh, the scientific name is Sambucus canadensis, and uh, I like it. I think it fits in the, it's a native plant, as you can tell by canadensis, but uh, the leaf structure, which is called pinnately compound, um, I'm in school for horticulture, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> um, uh, the pinnately compound leaf structure, uh, which refers to the stem here with the leaves on either side, um, I think it fits in well with the tropical theme. Uh, and the leaves are kind of serrated, which kind of looks cool too. Um, birds love this plant, so if any of you uh, are interested in attracting birds to your yard and elderberry is a fantastic plant these are uh purple petunias um the uh yeah just petunias nothing interesting there <laughs> um the uh this is a daylily so this is a reblooming daylily again i got it from lowe's early in the season um in a one of those like boxes you know you get like six plants in a in a kit or a container um, uh, red or yellow, uh, reblooming daylily. There's a little hosta. I'm pretty sure that's a dwarf thing because it hasn't gotten any bigger. Um, I think it's hosta June. I'm not sure. Um, that's just a guess. That, uh, 
that too is from Lowe's and they don't mark their their plants so moving on this way we have a majesty palm and uh, this is a house plant for the uh, for the winter they do really crappy in the house because um, I don't know why actually but um, yeah these definitely need if you're gonna have a majesty palm they definitely need to be outside for the summer um, and that's the glow from the tiki torch on that leaf right there uh, I didn't show you the bamboo this is a Philostasis by Seti so this is a running bamboo and it is in a pot because it is a running bamboo I'll do a video later when I plant it about um, how to contain running bamboo and keep it, uh, you know, in an in an area. Basically, in short, you dig a trench that's eight inches deep around the area that you want to keep it contained and prune any rhizomes that come across in spring and fall. Um, <laughs> that was said really fast. Um, this orchid is uh, a dendrobium. Uh, the cultivar is Aridang Blue. Um, and so with orchids, once the old cane blooms, it'll never bloom again. You have to get the, the blooms will come from the new shoots. And, uh, yes, I am a gun person. This is a, uh, BB gun, as you can see by the mag being really skinny and the BBs. Um, it's a Winchester 1911. So, um, cool stuff. I was shooting earlier today so popping tin cans <laughs> um, over here this is a um, a little planter uh, right next to an AK um, aren't guns great garden ornaments I think so <laughs> uh, just kidding um, uh, this is a Ipomia which is sweet potato vine uh, this is the chartreuse type also, there are those same petunias that you saw uh, over there uh, in this planter. It's just the sweet potato vine is so uh, vigorous that uh, it kind of choked them out. And then the canna is canna intrigue. This goes in the, um, with all these hardy tropicals like the Cleopatra canna, like any hardy tropical that's in a pot, um, I let the frost hit it to kill it back. Um, to the bulb and uh, and then I'll just stick it in the basement for the winter um, For the gun people the airsoft people uh, this is a uh, oh cyber gun uh, AK 74 AKS 74 U uh, You got it from airsoft mega store for like 130 bucks uh, Pretty cool gun, but this video is not about guns if you would like me to make videos about guns and like um, and other cool uh, weapons like knives and whatnot, just uh, put it in the comments and tell me because I'd be happy to do that. Um, this is a uh, um, a red hibiscus, another native. This cultivar is called Lord Baltimore. Um, again, it blooms in late summer. This is a, a pink china elephant ear, and uh, this is probably as hardy as Musa Bastu, and again, it looks great next to the banana. Um, this is uh, the Musa Bastu that made it through the winter, so it's uh, a very hardy plant, and you can see it only came up a couple of weeks ago, and it's not hot yet, and it's really, the leaf is already at least the length of my hand, so... It's, um, they, they grow incredibly fast. And, uh, you can see I haven't watered it enough based on the, uh, dead edges on the leaves. With houseplants, that usually means chlorine in your water. Um, over here, I have what will be, late in that, uh, later in the summer video, a, uh, mass planting of, of cannas. Uh, cannas in my area are marginally hardy. Um, I had these planted, I just planted these recently, so I don't know if they'll make it through the winter, but it's likely because they're planted near the foundation. So if you have a plant like uh, 
say like a purple fountain grass um, or something that's marginally hardy for um, for you guys plant it near your foundation and in a wind protected location and they should come back um, for some reason that uh, I don't know that's a good tip um, this is a rose a perennial rose my dad is into roses, so here it is. He calls it, uh, I think the cultivar is Jerry Garcia. I don't know. Um, I'm probably wrong with that, because I know just about jack shit about roses. <laughs> so, there's the, there's my infinite knowledge on roses. Um, anyway, this is a clumping bamboo. It's been here a good three years. So, uh, this is Fargesia rufa. Fargesia spathacea, and then the cultivar name is Rufa. Um, so the base is pretty, uh, pretty wide. Um, I don't know if I can show you, but uh, you can see the new growth for this year. Um, with bamboo is evergreen when it's established, and it hates being moved. So if you were to get bamboo of any type, clumping or running, make sure you plant it in the location it's going to stay. Um, and also, when it's young, let the snow knock it over because if you uh, expose the leaves during the winter, it'll get wind whipped and die back to the ground. Uh, I learned the hard way on that. Um, that's the flip side of the uh, Iris Versicolor and uh, or Northern Blue Flag. This is a, a white turtle head. The scientific name is Shaloni glabra. Um, cool plant. It kind of looks a little weedy until late summer when it has blooms that are uh, kind of shaped like a turtle's head. Over here is another hardy elephant ear, and uh, gladiolus are hardy, believe it or not. Um, I got uh, um, a gift from my dad's friend, uh, this pack of gladiolus, and uh, didn't know anything about them. I planted them, and uh, They've made it through the winter for a good three years. So, um, yeah. Pretty cool. Um, yeah, so that'll be part one. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, go see part two.